All right. I've been doing some research. And um, the number of white women going to prison has exploded in the last few years. Now, the number of black women has declined going to prison, which is very interesting. And, you know, when I did the video, white women don't go to abortion clinics, a lot of people had a problem with that. Like, you know, there are no wealthy black women and blah, blah. And that's like, okay, how many wealthy black women do you know? Seriously, how many? Because at the moment, I know of wealthy black women. Cardi B is a black woman and she's wealthy. I know of her, but I don't actually know her. So how many wealthy black women do you actually know that you can reach out and put your finger on? I don't think it's that many. But anywho, I feel that the number of white women going to prison has escalated because of the breakdown of society. Because this is something that we don't really hear about is the white community because let's kind of go back to the first MGTOs, so to speak, were black men because of the breakdown of the black family. But we had many black men who got put out the house. And what we have seen is what happened to the black family in the 60s and 70s and 80s is now happening to the white family, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. Uh, I haven't checked it, but I do know in 2011, 42% of all children were born out of wedlock. 42% in 2011. That number is higher. And guess which segment of the population has the most babies? White women, which means that that number was larger by white women because there are more white women White women represent the largest population segment we have in the United States of America. So just crunching the numbers, the number of white babies who were born out of weight wedlock has dramatically spiked since the 60s. And I feel that the number, and these white women are going to prison for violent crimes and drug crimes. And what you're seeing what happened to the black family in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s is now happening to white families. Except when the opioid crisis hit, that the police did not try to arrest and put everyone in jail. They actually were walking around with uh, these pins. I forget the name of them, these pins that they can inject people with who've had an overdose. So this right here is quite interesting that we have so many white women going to jail for violent crimes. Okay, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all this message. Stop waiting to get into the intellectual property school. Just stop waiting because uh, we're, we're having a training. Well, by the time you see this video, the training will be over. And one of the things that I wanna teach you guys is this is a low cost business model. This is a business that you can start with the money that you have or the money you don't have, and in 12 months be making five to $15,000 a month. Now, once again, you're not gonna make any money from jump. Let's just be, you know, brand new YouTube channel. It literally takes, you know, if you're fast, you can get your channel monetized in 30 days if that's fast, if you get enough views. But in the beginning, your YouTube money is just gonna be chump change. It's not gonna be anything significant. So what I'm going to teach you is how to set up a YouTube channel and I'm going to teach you how to have a channel that makes money, which is two different trainings. It's two different courses. So go ahead, get into intellectual property school today and stop wasting time. First, first comment or it's in the description. Just go ahead and you can use the promo code until July 31st. 11.59 p.m. 
and then that goes away. So go ahead and enroll in intellectual property school today. Get ahead. Go ahead and get in there. Get in there. Get in there. You're gonna love, you're gonna, you're gonna, this will be one of the best decisions you've ever made. I mean, it is skyrocketing. We have white women going to jail for murder. We have white women going to jail for dealing drugs. We have white women going to jail for assault. Assault, which means that they're physically putting their hands on someone. And I feel just like when, what's going on with white men? Who are doing all of these mass shootings? It is white men, the majority of them, the overwhelming majority. You know, if it's a white, if it's a mass shooting, you're going to see some creepy looking white guy as the prime suspect. Okay. And one of the things that has happened because uh, there's this good podcast called Modern, Modern Wisdom with Chris Williamson. I find it quite fascinating. And what we, what they were talking about was having a lot of single men, unpaired men, is dangerous for society. Uh, there was one episode where they were talking about that. And what is happening is because we have a breakdown in the family unit, like when I did my 4th of July uh, video talking about waking up and smelling barbecue and how all that's going away. So because these white men and Chris Williamson did an episode talking about the number of men who are not having sex has dramatically increased. So this is dramatically increasing the pool of dangerous homicidal men. I mean, I want you to think, where does a person's mind have to be for them to pick up a gun and go out and just start shooting people? This person's mind has got to be severely broken or severe state of mental illness or in a situation where people are just not doing well. They're just not doing well. And one of the things that I am seeing as we have, because it all starts with the breakdown of the family. We looked at what happened to the black community with the breakdown of the black family. Drug addiction, poor outcomes in school, high incarceration rates, just bad thing after bad thing after bad thing. And now this is happening in the white community. And once again, it goes back to the breakdown of the family unit. Because I want you to think, you know, if you're like 40 years old, how many times would you go to your aunt and uncle's house and see that your father was married to an average woman or your uncle? So let's say your uncle was married to an average woman. This was normal. Like if imagine all of those Olin Mills pictures, Olin Mills was a photography studio that took pictures of America in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. And those Olin Mill pictures, you would see so many couples and these men and women would get married and they would stay married and they would produce children and they would raise the children in a stable home. And this has, for, you know, for some people, some parts of the community still have that. But what is happening as we see the disintegration of the family unit in black families and we see the disintegration of the family unit in white families, we're starting to see that, let's call these unmoored. You know, mooring is like, you know, when you drop your anchor, you're moored, right? Unmoored, uh, men and women who are not attached, they're acting out. They're acting out because it is not the natural state of humanity to be alone. It's not the natural state of humanity to um, be living along because much of the feminist movement and much of the MGTOW red pill movement preaches stay alone. Do not 
get with men. Do not, you know, you have feminists, like, do not be a good submissive woman for a man. This is popular dogma in the feminist movement. And you have red pill men and MGTOW men saying, don't be a family man. Don't date a single mom. Don't be part of a family unit. And this disruption, because most of this, the very angry, very uh, salacious stuff is mostly online because you can leave online and go in the real world and you'll see men and women getting married. You will see a bunch of men dating single mothers. I mean, a bunch of men. And you will see a lot of women kind of like realizing that this feminist stuff ain't what I thought it was going to be. It's not cracked up to be what we thought it was going to be. Because once again, anything that preaches to not be part of something is going against the grand design. And we're seeing the outcomes because what we're going to see are more and more women continue to go to prison. More and more white women go, go to prison. And this is just a um, repercussion of society as we're we're in as we live today. We're just seeing more and more and more of this type of behavior. And as we see more and more white women go to jail, and this is something I remember seeing years ago because for a long, long time, women in general had passes like women didn't get speeding tickets at the rate that men got speeding tickets and i remember i was at the decab recorders court and i was in there because one of the things i would do is i would always reset my trial dates i would reset my trial dates like three four months it would be like almost into the next year sometimes the very next year before my case actually got heard because i realized that resetting a trial date would often set it up where the officer who wrote me the ticket wouldn't be in court and then I can get off. So I was there um, probably on my third reset and I remember this blonde, blue-eyed, quite busty, I mean, she had some big old titties, quite attractive, got blissed out by the judge. And I was just sitting here like, things have changed because women like her normally got passes. And this was years and years ago. This is to show you that society has been moving toward the state where women are been getting arrested. I remember there was this episode of this woman who was in jail and she was mouthing off to this um, deputy in jail and he body slammed her and something happened where she was bleeding from the mouth and there was a big uproar about this. But what has happened in society is women are no longer getting those passes that they used to. And in many regards, women are being treated in the same manner as men. Hello, equality. You do the crime, you can go to jail. You mouth off at a deputy, you can get beat down. Because men inherently knew this. Like anytime I'm in a situation where I get pulled off where by a cop, I'm a quiet and I'm quite obedient. Whatever he tells me to do, I do because I know that images of Rodney King getting his ass beat, that could be me. I know this. And what is now starting to happen is many women are realizing that that can happen to them. And it's throwing women because the pretty past, it doesn't work anymore. And for the white woman, the white woman has had the position of being a top of the food chain for a long, long, long time. There used to be this sentiment that they were saying in the twin, I'm white, I'm free. There was some sentiment that they used to say that there was this little slogan that they had and it don't work no more. And I feel that for a lot of white women in the lower class, they're used to being treated like crap because that's the environment in which they exist. But for women who are a few pegs above that, uh, the realization is quite stunning. It is um, it's a kind of blowing some minds because 
Who's the Karen? The Karen is this middle-aged white woman who has an attitude, you know, getting called a Karen. And a lot of these women um, are not prepared for the outcomes that are coming their way for disruptive behavior. White women could lie, like the woman who lied on Emmett Till and cost him his life. She said he whistled or some other stuff and this man, this young boy was killed. So white women have been getting away with murder for a long, long time. And that is now over. That is now over. And one of the things that has happened is as a society, women are finally starting to be treated equally in all regards. And guess what? They don't like it. They don't like it because that pretty pass, the, the, the perks, the privileges and stuff that they used to have are now gone. It, it's creating a situation. But go ahead, do a Google search and you will see the number of women being incarcerated is going through the roof. And once again, it comes back to the breakdown of the family unit. We have white men literally freaking out and going out and just shooting up the square because they're sexually repressed, they're upset, they're angry, they can't pair with anyone, and now we're seeing the same thing happen with white women. They're acting out because they can't find nobody. And as long as we have, like, Tommy Lauren, she did this rant where she was talking about, once again, she and her friends for finding it very hard to find suitable mates. And the Tommy Lawrence of the world literally outpriced themselves out the market. So you're making six figures, you've got this career, you look good, you're on television. A lot of men don't wanna deal with that. A lot of men don't wanna deal with that. And the man who does wanna deal with that has two or three or four Tommy Lawrence. And this is another issue because the men with that player player energy they are the men who can um, go ahead and have these type of situations going on. And the women are finding that to be extremely inhospitable. It's like, okay, I can get with this guy, but he's going to have two or three women. And he's, you know, and the guys are being bold with it. Like, yeah, you're just one of a crew. I got three of y'all. And they're finding, and this is what the Tommy Lawrence of the world are getting. So right now we have a massive state of disruption in the white community. On one side, we got white men losing their shit, going out and killing people. And I think it is just a matter of time before we have our first female mass shooter. It's just a matter of time, the way that we're going. Because until we start preparing, repairing, not preparing, repairing the family unit where people start getting married again, producing kids and having a normal, stable nuclear family. This is going to continue because once again, we were not put on this planet to be alone. And this is one of the, you know me, I've had my stories. I've talked about my situations, but I consistently keep a girlfriend. And in the future, that's gonna be a wife because I know that if you do not practice relationship building skills, you will lose them. You will become that 60, 70 year old man living in the house with a bunch of cats or perhaps a dog, and you will not have human companionship because you have become unaccustomed to being able to have a relationship because you have not been practicing relationship building skills. And this is something that happens on the men's side. This is something that's happened on the female side. A lot of these women out here cannot have a relationship because they don't know how. And that's not a sin. But a big part of that is many of these women are not interested in learning how to have a relationship. So this creates some crazy, crazy outcomes. But once again, you will see more and more white women going to jail for various crimes in the opioid epidemic. 
the number of communities that these opioids have destroyed is staggering. You have literally, you go to Philadelphia, you literally see people walking around, tweaking out in the streets. And part of that is the despair, uh, part of that is the loneliness. And until we start, so men and women start getting back together and having relationships, this is just gonna keep escalating. And I, what, what's, what's gonna happen with the incel movement? Going back to Chris Williamson's podcast, Modern Wisdom, the number of men who are not having sex is skyrocketing. And when I was a kid, we used to have this term called build up. Like if someone was extremely strong or, you know, a little extra musty, we say you got that build up because you've not had that release. And right now we have ticking time bombs in men who are going to reach that point where it's going to build up and they're going to go out and do something harmful to society. It's just happening. And we're going to have more and more of these men produced more and more of these men committing heinous acts. And like I said, it's just a matter of time before we have our first female mass shooter. It's just a matter of time because we have a society that says one thing, but our general makeup, because like uh, I wrote a piece for um, one of my courses talking about, you know, my Craigslist protocols and why they, they work. Some of those ads are 20 years old and they still work today. You want to know why? Because human nature hasn't changed and human nature hasn't changed in thousands and thousands of years. But political and activist nature has very much changed. And this is creating a lot of problems a lot of problems and what you're going to see going forward i feel it's going to get worse before it gets better and that's really sad because what is happening is you have all of these men and all of these women creating children and creating children who are growing up in these environments where they're not being properly groomed to be a active functioning adult you have all of these little boys and little girls growing up in these single parent households and they're not being prepared for the future that's going to come. So they're not going to know how to have relationships. They're not going to know how to build family units. So this is a cycle that keeps perpetuating because the savages are reproducing. And one of the things, and I think this is one of the saddest things, the number of women who are pregnant that go to prison and have their baby in prison. And then once they have their baby, that baby is ripped from them and thrown into the system. That is very, very sad. I mean, I can only imagine what it's gonna be like to be a child that is gonna grow up in that type of situation and the outcomes for that child. Because once again, um, when I was going through some um, court order training, this guy had this saying, daddy ain't there to send them. Because they have the stats of the number of kids who go to prison, the number of kids who have bad outcomes in school because there is no father in the home. It is quite staggering. I mean, it, it literally blows your mind that the reason that this kid didn't do well because he didn't have a masculine father in the home. I mean, it's like, you see it in athletes. Like you look at the top college stars and how often do you see the parents? Bryce Young, reflect to his parents. Joe Burrow, reflect to his parents. Patrick Mahomes, reflects to his parents. So you're seeing that to perform at a very high level that these people, these kids need to have the proper guidance of a two family stable household. And we're getting really, really far away from that. Really, really far away from that. Okay, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you all this message. Stop waiting to get into the intellectual property school. Just stop waiting because um, we're, the, we're having a training. Well, by the time you see this video, the training will be over 
And one of the things that I wanna teach you guys is this is a low cost business model. This is a business that you can start with the money that you have or money you don't have and in 12 months be making five to $15,000 a month. Now, once again, you're not gonna make any money from jump. Let's just be, you know, brand new YouTube channel. It literally takes, you know, if you're fast, you can get your channel monetized in 30 days if that's fast, if you get enough views. But in the beginning, your YouTube money is just gonna be chump change. It's not gonna be anything significant. So what I'm gonna teach you is how to set up a YouTube channel and I'm gonna teach you how to have a channel that makes money, which is two different trainings. It's two different courses. So go ahead, get into intellectual property school today and stop wasting time. First, first comment or it's in the description. Just go ahead and you can use the promo code until July 31st, 11.59 p.m. And then that goes away. So go ahead and enroll in the intellectual property school today. Get ahead. Go ahead and get in there. Get in there. Get in there. You're going to love, you're going to, you're going to, this will be one of the best decisions you've ever made.